Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. In 2008, when Mayo Clinic doctors were planning the separation of conjoined twins, the surgeons asked the Department of Radiology to produce a 3D model of the baby's shared liver. Now, because 3D models are life-size and patient-specific, surgeons are able to hold and rotate the model in their, in their hands, and they get a better sense of how they need to position the patient on the table when they're doing the operation, where they can make their cuts, and whether or not there might be different approaches to the problem that they hadn't even thought of or didn't think were possible when they were studying the case in only two dimensions. The rest, as they say, is history. The 3D anatomical modeling program at Mayo Clinic has grown exponentially over the past eight years, and one area where 3D modeling is now used extensively is to prepare surgeons and patients for pediatric airway surgery. Here to discuss 3D modeling is Mayo Clinic ENT specialist, Dr. Karthik Balakrishnan. Welcome back to the program. It's good to see you again, Dr. Balakrishnan. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. So this, the 3D modeling, it, it's actually been a huge advance uh, in terms of helping for surgical planning. Massive advance, yes. I mean, even the best of us have a hard time converting two-dimensional slices from a CT scan or an MRI into a 3D model in our heads and not losing detail. And this takes that out of our hands and makes us actually able to hold a physical object that we can spin around, we can use to teach patients, we can use to talk to each other. And um, interestingly, it often turns up little quirks of the patient's anatomy that we might not have noticed on the 2D that actually change the course of the surgery. So we went from one dimension, an Mm X-ray, two dimensions, CT scanning and MRI scan, and now we've actually got a model, a 3D model. Pretty incredible, isn't it? It's really amazing. And, you know, for a while there were these virtual 3D models that were reconstructed on the computer, but even those, it's not the same. If I can hold this and change my line of sight and see what my approach is going to be to a structure, uh, that's invaluable. And there are actually some surgeons who are making these models to practice new or complex procedures before they actually do it on the live patient as well. What information do you put into the printer or into the computer to be able to make this? Do you put in a mix of CT and MRI, or how does the printer know what to make? Well, first of all, if there are people listening who don't know what a 3D printer is, let's go there. Absolutely. So um, 3D printing has become popular in general society as well. Um, There are a lot of folks using those to 3D print everything from gifts to coffee coasters to whatever else but Ooh, um, i have a keychain at my house made by my son there you go <laughs> um, they even have a pen now that'll doodle in 3d as you move it through the air but what it is is it basically lays down layers of some kind of polymer or plastic that then harden and you send the 3d printing machine a data file that tells it what each layer of that object should look like amazing and it stacks them up and so since we are here on the radio and a lot of people cannot see this people who are watching this on youtube which as a side note you can do now you can watch youtube videos can see in front of you actually looks like the lower part of a jaw and the upper part of a chest is that a child correct this is is a late uh sort of a late teens uh young man in his late teens and you can compare it to this one which is a life side model of another baby or sorry of another patient who was about seven months old yeah, and that fits right in the palm of your hand. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and we, what is that other thing that looks like a three? This thing. Yeah. What's so that? So this is a three D <laughs> printed trachea or windpipe for this same patient, the teenager. Okay, the teenager. In a different material, and um, so the folks who run the three D printing lab were kind enough to print me one in a soft material, so I could actually practice how I was going to reconstruct this windpipe and actually sew it to see how things would come together. That has got to be crazy helpful for the patient. Well, I'm sure you're yes. like the surgeon and doctor is no. great, but the patient it has to help immensely. It's incredible. It's great for patient education and for surgeon education. I mean, I'll tell you, <laughs> before I before we had this option, I would go to the meat locker north of the city and get pig tracheas because I had no other way to practice the, some of these really complex things. And now I don't have to go to the meat locker. Um, but uh, that trachea looks like it's been it's smashed. And yes. What happened there? So this patient had a disorder where his trachea was both compressed and collapsed. And so it... Became, Makes it a little tough to breathe, doesn't it? It's very tough. And he had been like this for most of his life. And so um, the surgery that we were planning to do for him was one that's been done successfully only at one other location uh, in the country. And so we wanted to prepare for it as well as we could. And it really kind of paid off. 
Why, why is, uh, is it so difficult? I mean, it looks, uh, can't, don't you, isn't there such a thing as a tracheal transplant where you can take out that segment and put in a new one? Great question. Yes, that is something that's in development, but it's still in the very early stages and has such long-term implications for the patient. Whereas here, based on using these 3D models and our knowledge of the anatomy, we were actually able to just remove the bad segment and put the good segment back together using his own tissue, which is a much easier thing for him to recover from. Because children and infants are smaller, is this even more helpful the smaller a patient is, or is it just helpful all the way around? It's kind of helpful all the way around. And, you know, to give you an example, so for, for us, we have these models printed, you know, maybe once a month, once every couple months when we have a really complicated surgery. Some of our head and neck reconstructive con surgeons, when they're reconstructing a patient after a cancer surgery, they print it for every single patient just routinely. So it's mm -hmm. become so standard in some practices here at Mayo that every patient gets one. You uh, talked about using this for tracheal or airway surgery. What else have you used it for? So we've used it for airway management in patients with very complex spine problems, which interestingly this teenage patient also had. Um, so for those of you watching on YouTube, you can see on the back here there's these purple stripes. Those are spine hardware. Uh, he had a very complicated spine surgery here at Mayo prior to our doing his airway surgery, and we had to manage his airway for the spine surgery. And so we use these to help plan that as well. 3D, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. No. 3D printing has obviously, even for this, this one patient that we're referencing, this mm -hmm. teenage boy, made a huge life-changing difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Does it also, uh, can it also help you with your approach, knowing just what you've got to go through and around it to get to the problem? Yes, and for this young man in particular, because of quirks of his anatomy and the way his spine was and everything it was getting to his trachea to do the reconstruction was potentially going to be incredibly dangerous and so having the 3d model helped me to work with dr duraney from cardiothoracic surgery uh, and we could work together to plan how we were going to get there and what we would need to do well before we ever actually started working on the patient how long does it take uh you uh, radiology these are done in radiology right they mm -hmm. have the big machine the the, the 3d printer yes. how long does it take and do you know how much it costs yeah, so a small model like this uh, young baby that I'm, young baby's model that I'm holding in my hand might take four to six hours. Um, a simple tubular model like the trachea you're holding, Dr. Shives, might take something even less. A very large, more complex model with several colors or for a larger patient might take up to 24 hours. Um, so it's quite variable. The thing that really takes time is the planning beforehand. Is All right, the arteries are red the, and the veins are blue. Pretty amazing. All right. <laughs> um, and so where is this heading? What is in the future, what's 3D printing going to so be used for? In addition to this, we're actually looking at 3D printing things to be implanted into patients. So 3D printing custom endotracheal tubes, 3D printing stents, 3D printing implants into, so that it can be used to replace body parts, all of those things. 3D modeling and how it can help your surgeon do yeah. a better job. We've been with ear, nose, and throat specialist, Dr. Karthik Balakrishnan. Thanks so much for being with us. Amazing stuff. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure.